Uh, we're going to get into talking about waves, that's this whole unit waves, and then sound, a particular type of wave, of course. Uh, so we're going to talk about waves, this unit, with a focus on, on sound specifically. Unfortunately, in this class, we won't get into light. Uh, although, I'm going to talk a little bit about the speed of light, just because it has some interesting uh, consequences. Uh, but in general, there are two different types of waves. Uh, we can have a transverse wave or a longitudinal wave. Uh, a transverse wave, like if I have a rope here, a transverse wave can look, you know, something like this. I flip, you know, if I jerk the rope to give it a little flick, then you have this pulse that travels down the wave and it's here and then later on be over here and it moves, works its way down. Uh, and notice that with a transverse wave, each a given point on the rope goes up and then back down. Uh, so the definition of a transverse wave is that the displacement of particles is perpendicular to the wave motion. So the wave is traveling to the right, uh, but for example, on a rope, particles move up and down. A given point on the rope just goes up and then comes back down. Uh, but it does go up and come back down, so it's not like there isn't a physical thing that is moving its way down the rope. Uh, the wave is, we, we say the wave is traveling down the rope, but a given point on the wave doesn't move at all uh, horizontally as I've drawn it. It, it only move, goes up and then comes back down. Uh, some example, I already said uh, waves on a string or rope are transverse. Uh, light is a transverse wave. There is a, you know, light is electromagnetic radiation. There's an electric field and a magnetic field associated with a light wave, and both of those oscillate uh, perpendicular to the direction the, the wave is moving. Uh, and a slinky can do transverse waves. Uh, you can give it a little jerk, and you can see that wave pulse travel back uh, up and down. And I'll sh show you uh, what the waves going down a slinky look like uh, when I see you in class. Uh, longitudinal is kind of the opposite, or maybe not the opposite, but the other kind of wave displacement of particles, instead of being perpendicular, it is parallel. It is parallel to the wave motion. This is harder to draw, so I copy the diagram. Uh, so this is actually this is like a slinky, where some areas of it are compressed and other areas are are stretched, and the the point of greatest stretching is called a rarefaction. Uh, so there's a, a wave term for you that applies to longitudinal waves. You have compressions and rarefactions. <clears throat> um, so what's happening, any given point on this springy thing is just sort of moving quickly. It'll pulse forward a bit and then settle back. Uh, so the motion is back and forth. The wave travels down the, the spring or whatever. <clears throat> uh, but no, it, again, no individual piece moves very far. It just kind of wiggles back and forth. So here a piece will wiggle up and down. Here a piece will wiggle back and forth. Uh, and these two different pictures demonstrate the difference between a wave pulse and a wave train. A pulse is just one little displacement that's making its way down, whereas a wave train would be like you keep sending them, and then you get this sort of... Uh, then the if you draw the wave, it starts looking like a uh, simple harmonic motion, a graph of simple harmonic motion. It's not the same thing, but uh, it does have, can have that same sort of sinusoidal shape. Uh, longitudinal waves, the most common example of longitudinal waves are sound. Uh, sound is generated by air that is compressing and rarefacting uh, in, in certain ways. Uh, that's how we, we hear stuff. Uh, a slinky can also demonstrate a longitudinal wave. 
Uh, and again, I'll show you what that looks like uh, when, I, when I see you in class. Uh, now, transverse waves are a little bit easier to draw. Uh, particularly, it's hard to draw a sound wave because it's compressing air, so you'd have to draw a whole lot of dots to, to picture that. Uh, this spring is probably the easiest way to draw it, but here we go. Let's see. So we've got a transverse wave. I'm going to draw a transverse wave, uh, and I'm going to draw a wave train that's sort of sinusoidal. This is, uh, you know, something is causing, maybe this is a rope, and something is causing it to have this sinusoidal oscillation. Maybe somebody at, at the end of the rope continually wiggling it back and uh, up and down or back and forth or whatever. Uh, so some terminology. The points of maximum positive displacement are called crests. Oh, that's a crest, that's a crest, that's a crest, that's a crest. This is a crest. Uh, trough is just the opposite. It's a point of maximum negative displacement. Trough, trough, and then trough, trough. All of those are, are troughs. Uh, the wavelength is... Uh, so on a if you have a position time graph for an oscillator, you, know, you find the the time from crest to crest, and that would be your period. Uh, wavelength is kind of the same thing, but it's if you're graphing or, you know, displacement in one direction versus displacement in the other direction, the wavelength is from crest to crest or trough to trough right there. That is the wavelength. Uh, it is just a distance, so it has units of, of meters or uh, whatever. Uh, the variable for wavelength is the Greek letter lambda. Uh, that's what, what we'll be using that throughout the chapter, so that's, that's good to know. Uh, so these are different wave property thingos. Uh, on a longitudinal wave, the crest corresponds to a compression. The trough corresponds to a rarefaction. Uh, so if I was to sort of superimpose a longitudinal wave on this, it would correspond to a wave that's doing this. Uh, and a lot of times, most of the time when we're analyzing waves, we'll draw longitudinal waves because they're easier to think about than compressions and rarefactions. Uh, but y you can talk about longitudinal waves and use this sort of sinusoidal curve as a picture, as a way of visualizing it. But keep in mind that for longitudinal waves, you don't have this sort of sinusoidal thing happening physically, uh, but it works for analogy. So a, a compression is a crest, a rarefaction is a trough, and a point of zero displacement is somewhere in the middle where the, and at that point, the spring or whatever it is, is not uh, compressed or rarefacted it is just at its normal state of normal density I guess is what you would say um, on period for a continuous wave a period and frequency still mean the same sort of thing as they did for simple harmonic motion period is the time it takes for one cycle so that which is the time between crests between maxes and mins or sorry between max and max or min and min uh, frequency same thing, number of crests per second, period still 1 over f. The amplitude of the wave is still the maximum displacement from rest position or equilibrium, although amplitude really only makes sense to talk about for uh, a transverse wave. Uh, longitudinal waves, I guess you could talk about amplitude in terms of the density of the spring or the air or whatever, uh, but that's not normally done. Um, as long as a wave is in a single medium, uh, medium is what a wave travels through. Sound waves need a medium to travel through. Uh, they, you know, There is no sound in space because there's no particles to vibrate for us to hear. Uh, light does not need a medium as far as we can tell, uh, but most other types of waves do. Uh, but as long as they don't move to a different kind of material, waves will travel at a constant speed. 
so if the wave is traveling at a constant speed, then we can say velocity is going to be distance over time. And what's the easiest distance to measure for a wave? Well, that's going to be the wavelength. And how much time does it take for a wavelength to go by? Well, that's the period. Uh, so wave speed is equal to uh, wavelength over period. And 1 over period is equal to frequency. So we could also say that velocity is equal to lambda times frequency. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll look at speeds of some different kind of waves. So let's say this, this graph here is a snapshot of a rope that a wave train or a continuous wave is, is traveling down. Uh, I can say the x and y scales are measured in centimeters. We want to find wavelength and amplitude. Well, we can just look at the graph. Wavelength is going to be from crest to crest. Uh, and we can't necessarily tell exactly, but this is 3, so that's 2.5. Call this 2.7. And then we could approximate 4.5. This could be about 4.75. So then our wavelength is going to be 4.75 minus 2.7. Uh, so our wavelength is approximately equal to 2.05 centimeters. And then amplitude, we go from the middle. Uh, amplitude is from the middle to the uh, top or bottom. So Let's go from top to bottom and divide by 2, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so that's about what well, we could guess, maybe 8.2. The y-coordinate here, just barely bigger than 12, maybe 12.1. Uh, and so then our amplitude is uh, the difference between those two divided by 2. Uh, so we could approximate that the amplitude of this wave and is about 1.95 centimeters. Okay? A student measures that it takes about 1.3 seconds for three crests to pass by x equals 6. So 1.3 seconds for three crests, well, Period is the amount of time for one crest, so if it takes three crests 1.3 seconds, our period is just 1.3 divided by 3, uh, which is 0.43 repeating. So our period is about 0.43, and we know frequency is 1 over period. So we take 1 over that and get about 2.308. Uh, and frequency units are 1 over seconds, uh, but that's also known as 1 hertz. Frequency of the unit is in seconds to the negative 1, or 1 over seconds, uh, which is known as a hertz, which is abbreviated capital H C. We want to find the wave speed. We know V equals lambda F, or lambda over period. Get the same answer, whichever formula you use. We know our wavelength is about 2.05 centimeters, so I'm going, to, I'm going to convert that to meters. And then our frequency is 2.308. Uh, but I'll use the stored value for that. So take that times 0 0.0205. I get that our wave speed is about 0.0473. Meters per second, which is pretty slow, uh, but oh well.